Okay, so this one's more of an opinion video, uh, but I get asked this a lot and I wanted to share my advice on this. So I get asked quite a lot, Anthony, how, how should I organize my project? I'm thinking of starting a new thing and I don't know where I should put all the files or where I should put my logic or where I should put blah, 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 blah. And I, I get this question a lot from especially beginners, but also people that have worked in programming for a long time. And my answer to this question is, it doesn't matter. If you're wasting time thinking about it before starting your project, just start your project. Don't worry about organizing things. The organization will come as you need it, if you need it. And my general advice for this is shove everything into one file and stick with that until it is painful. Now, this has a few advantages. The first is, you know, if you're working in a terminal like I tend to do, you don't have to bounce around to a bunch of different files. You know, jump to definition isn't that important because everything's all in one place. Also, it's easier to find things. You can also just kind of think about things all in one space and you don't have to you know, bounce around and think about other stuff. Uh, but sometimes you'll eventually grow your project to be large enough and then if it's necessary, you can split the files up. I find that a, with a lot of my projects, I don't ever reach the place where uh, you know, they're big enough that I need to split them. The other nice thing about having a single file is it's really easy to distribute it to someone else. You can just give them the file and they'll just run the file. They don't need to you know, install something or copy things into the right directory tree or make sure they're running it in the right place or mucking around with pip or site packages or Python paths or other stuff like that. Uh, they can just run the one file and it works great. Uh, I wanted to show you some stats from some of my projects and show you how many of my projects have grown beyond needing one file and also, you know, how, how big some of these files got before I decided, okay, enough is enough. We probably need to actually think about organization of this. Uh, but anyway, let me show you some of those. Uh, I'm going to be using all repos, which is a tool that I wrote to clone and distributed grep or refactor or search or, or all sorts of stuff. It has a bunch of tools that make it easy to find stuff like this. And I'm specifically going to be looking at Python projects here. Uh, now there's two ways to have a, a, a distributable Python project. Uh, either you have a package where you'll have a folder in init.py or you'll have a single file. When you have a single file, you'll be using py modules. If you're using a package, you'll have packages. This of course is specific to setup tools. But anyway, uh, so I'm going to do all repos find files. We're going to be looking for setup.cfg and we're going to make sure to output paths. Otherwise it's going to give you nice pretty printed output. Uh, this is kind of the option that's useful for combining with a bunch of other stuff. And then I'm going to, uh, well, that's going to be covered up. Let's uh, let's write this in a editor. All repos find files, output paths, uh, setup.cfg. We're then going to pipe that to xargs grep. Uh, we're going to be looking for files that have py modules in them. So this is going to be our, uh, our, our single file packages, and we're going to see how many of those we have. So if we run this command, you'll see that I have 42 single file uh, things. If we change this to, uh, uh, oops, we'll edit the same command again. Instead of this, we'll do, <laughs> got rid of the new lines there. Instead, we'll do packages here. That'll give us the multi-line files, uh, or the multi-file multi, multi -file ones. And you'll see that I have 42 things on PyPI that I never needed to go beyond a single file. They worked great at one file, so why bother expanding them? Now, I did have about 15 projects that did expand beyond this. Now, some of these are not actually things that I created. And so uh, the, these are things like, you know, PyTest or you know, Cheetah even, um, PyTest, Talks. These are kind of l your larger projects where they need more stuff to look at. And it actually looks like we have, oh no. Right. Um, yeah, so you can see some of the other ones. Some of these started as multi-file projects like Git Code Debt. Uh, this was before I had, I mean, this was like the first package I ever wrote. So I didn't even, Think about making multi-file packages or you know, pre-commit. This was like the second thing that I wrote. So uh, didn't didn't really think about stuff there. But a lot of these are packages that grew over time and eventually split into multiple uh, multiple files. I wanted to walk you through a few of them just to show how big they got and why I decided to split them at that point and then how I went about splitting them. Uh, so the first of those is Pi Upgrade, which <laughs> is by far the largest single file package that I've ever gotten to before deciding, okay, Fine, enough's enough. I should probably split this and make it a little bit easier to understand. Uh, and PyUpgrade reached almost 3,000 lines before I decided to split it. Uh, and I still think it was fairly maintainable, even at 3,000 lines. 
uh, things were relatively separated into different parts inside the file, which also made it easier to think about when I went to split it. Uh, and so there was you know, a lot of these AST parsers, a lot of these um, you know, token parsers, et cetera, et cetera. And finally, at the very bottom, there's the actual command line portion. And this tends to be how I organize things if I stick them in a single file. Command line portion all the way at the bottom, thinking bits above it, uh, you know, imports at the top. Now, when I went to split this, I actually decided to rewrite the engine that was you know, handling the AST, and that was another motivation for splitting things. Uh, the engine before was using multiple full AST parses and full tokenization, which is pretty slow. Uh, you know, doing a tokenization, doing an AST parse takes a while. And so the new version of this uh, is split into a kind of a different setup where I have this little data module. It imports a bunch of plugins. Uh, the plugins uh, handle a specific AST type. That way they don't need to reparse the AST over and over and over. Uh, and most of the thinking bits of PyUpgrade now lives in plugins. Now it's not actually a plugin system, so third parties can't you know, inject stuff into this, but um, it's a plugin system within PyUpgrade that makes it easy to add another check. Uh, for instance, this one was added very recently. Uh, this is the most recent check that was added to PyUpgrade. Uh, just a very simple rewrite, but all they had to do is write a simple plugin that Use it that responds to attribute, it has its specific logic, you know exactly where this plugin lives, and this is the thinking bits of PyUpgrade, how that works. Another project that I split after getting uh, essentially too big is my chatbot. This is the chatbot that runs on my Twitch streams, and before it was split, it was right around 1,300 lines. And most of the reason for splitting this was similar to PyUpgrade. Uh, there was a lot of this like application logic where you know connecting to IRC, handling that connection, you know, doing configuration parsing, and application logic, which is like uh, you know, commands that did very specific things. So you could see this is how um, the video idea command was implemented. And uh, adding commands was not super obvious. There was like a lot of this sort of magic here. And I felt like it made sense to put commands in their own place. So now in the, the latest version of the bot, there is this plugins, and each plugin implements its own set of commands. So like if we want to look at the plugin that punishes me by forcing me to use Vim, all of the logic related to Vim is entirely in this file, and it, it, the, the, the structure becomes, you know, it forces itself, uh, which, which I find is kind of nice. Um, but when it was in one file, you know, everything was in place. Pretty easy to find this still, even though it was mixed with everything else. Uh, Last thing that I split, and this was, um, I was a little reluctant to split. I actually really liked when my text editor, Babby, was only in a single file because it meant that I could drop this file on any machine and I would have uh, a fully working text editor in you know 1,700 lines of code. And I really liked that aspect of it, uh, but the main reason to switch to a split file situation here was actually because I added a dependency to Babby. Uh, as soon as there was a dependency, I couldn't just drop this file anywhere and run it, so it didn't really make sense to restrict myself to that uh, to that requirement. And so after that, you know, I was able to split things into code highlighters, uh, linter implementations. I don't even know what resources is. Oh, this is the theme. Um, you know, any of the little utilities got their own file. They got their own tests, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it made a lot more sense after splitting it to take take individual components and and put them into their own module and organize them that way. Uh, but it was pretty nice when you could just, you know, grab this file and uh, probably still works, ish. <laughs> grab this file and, you know, just run Babby directly, probably even edit itself. Yeah, so this was this was a very early version of Babby, but it, it mostly still works. You know, this is, this is a text editor. You can edit text. Uh, oh, even undo and redo works. Yeah, so, it was pretty nice to have just a, a, a single file. Of course, there's no syntax out in here, and uh, it's a little bit laggy. But anyway, uh, that's kind of my opinions about organizing projects. Start with a single file. Only when it becomes painful, split it out. Uh, there are some conveniences to a single file, but you know, don't, don't get hung up on starting your project. Just start your project. That's the most important part is getting started. Anyway, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.